I've always been fascinated with the fire from Breath of the Wild. The flames dance and billow, and it almost has this fluid-like feel that I feel like hasn't been captured in many games. I've always wondered how the artist created something so beautiful to look at, so I spent the week learning about how fire works in video games. After a lot of research and even more trial and error, I ended up making my own Breath of the Wild inspired fire shader in Unreal Engine 5 that I'm really, really happy with. And today I'm gonna to show you how it works. And I'm also gonna teach you another really interesting technique for making fire that I discovered in my quest for knowledge in the second half of this video. I'd like to introduce you to our first technique, animated shaders. If you watched my video on animated shaders, you know that game artists can create almost anything by taking different noise textures, shapes, and masks, and animating them by blending them and scrolling the textures in all different directions. We can use these textures to create waterfalls and explosions, and not surprisingly, we can also create fire this way. So here's how I did it. Fire, by nature, is always moving up and away from its source. This is what makes flames seem to dance and flap in the wind. So let's take two different textures and scroll them up at slightly different speeds and then blend them to create a unique scrolling textures. This blended texture is going to drive the shape of our flames. I also added a top down gradient to ensure the flames fade out at the top instead of getting cut off. This is still one large scrolling texture and doesn't look like anything. So let's create a mask that will drive the flames general shape. I experimented with some textures in Photoshop until I found a shape that I was really happy with. To use this texture to mask out the shape, I inverted the texture using a one minus node and then subtracted that from the scrolling texture. Now things are starting to look a little, little more like fire, but we're still missing something. When looking at a real flame, it's always shifting and dancing around in the wind. To mimic this movement, I wanted to find a way to distort the texture, but this is where things get interesting. By using a time node and blending that with another scrolling texture, we can shift the pixels in the shader ahead in time based on the values in the new scrolling texture, which end up shifting and distorting the flames very, very convincingly. I learned this really cool technique while researching for this video, and now that I've learned it, I'm really, really excited to use this in my future projects. One of the things I love most about fire is its color. I love the way it blends from a brilliant orange red to its calmer, bright yellow core. I really wanted to nail this color transition, so I decided to use a lerp node to map the new colors to the grayscale mask we've created, where the darker values are red and the lighter values gradually blend into a brighter yellow like the core of a flame. What I'm really starting to like about shaders is how flexible they are. With my fire shader, I've created a bunch of parameters, so I can change the shape, size, color, and anything else you can think of in a blink of an eye, and it's all updated in real time. It's really, really powerful stuff. Now, I don't have time to add everything I want to these videos, so I also decided to create a full-length tutorial where I show you how to make this fire shader on my Patreon. It's only $5, so I'd give it a look if you're serious about making game art and want a full tutorial that holds your hand through the entire process. So that is the general idea of how Breath of the Wild makes its fire. But there are other ways to make fire, and this one is even easier. One of the challenges of making a video game is that everything needs to be rendered at 33 milliseconds if you want a game to run at 30 FPS, or 16 milliseconds if you want your game to run at 60 FPS. This leaves very little time for complex calculations, meaning that making a hyper-realistic simulated fire isn't very practical in engine. But looking at a game like Halo Infinite, where there are tons of detailed fires and explosions, there's clearly a way around this. So what is it? As I ended up discovering, if VFX artists need to create an effect with a lot of detail, they'll create the effect offline in a third-party simulation software, render those out into different frames, and then arrange all of those frames into a single texture called an atlas, and play back those frames one at a time on a camera-facing particle, mimicking the detail of a high-quality real-time simulation for a fraction of the cost. This technique is called a flipbook. Remember those flipbooks you used to make as a kid? 
Um, this works on a very similar concept. So making a flipbook in Unreal Engine turned out to be really, really easy. After I created my texture atlas, I plugged it into a node called the flipbook node. And then after adding a few really simple inputs, pause the screen here if you want to see the nodes, you've got a really cool fire animation up and running in a matter of minutes. For how technical and challenging I'm finding VFX to be, this was surprisingly easy. If you're interested in learning VFX, flipbooks are essential to learn. So as another bonus, I made another full length tutorial showing you how to make flipbooks in Unreal Engine 5 on Patreon, where I'm gonna hold your hand through the whole experience. So a fire shader, a flipbook fire shader, and all of the textures I made this week, it's all gonna be up there. It's been a very <laughs> busy week. So this is how games like Halo Infinite create fire and other VFX with such a high level of detail. Flipbooks, who knew? So yeah. Shaders are pretty cool. <laughs>